Okay, new game, and um, we're in a Rising Tides game. I've I've gone in as Nigeria, Tim. Um, you won't know that yet because you've just been out for a walk and just got back. So I discussed with Jonathan. He's advised me to go for Nigeria. I don't know who either of you two are, um, and I think Jonathan, are you gonna have you set up an alliance or are you setting up an alliance? setting up one now and it's going to be amazing great don't overhype <laughs> I've just realised I've not really started off with very many troops I've got like um, two troops on each city and then in the middle I've got two troops and then a, a combat recon so I guess we're, we're starting off with fewer resources we've got five cities and research, I'm going to go straight into... Oh no, can't build a stri strike fighter until day three. Can you guys? Because of the doctrine which we're in, we can both build strikes from day one. Ah, so I'm just in an unlucky doctrine, okay. Right, I've, I've made a coalition. Great, let's join the coalition and see where you guys are at least anyway, and then we can start to plan. Um... Oh, there you go. Yep. <laughs> Can you tell which one it is? Yeah. I've applied Billy G's okay. troopers. Uh, step one, oh, get yeah. vaccinated. Step two, conquer the world. I only saw it because it's UK equity. So, okay, so you're Cameroon. I've, I've applied and you're just going to have to wait for that to update. Sounds like Tim's applied as well. So where's Cameroon? Oh. Oh, we're next door neighbours, okay. That makes sense why you advised me to be Nigeria. Yeah. Two, three, four, five. You got five. Okay, okay. So you're next to a couple of like one one city things. Oh, and, the, and we've got this dead zone. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so we're on one side of the dead zone with um, these corridors that might be quite defensible. Uh, river in the south. Um, river, river going up, splitting through my territory. There we go. I can see you guys. Oh, and Tim, you're next door to me. <laughs> I was going to attack you first, so Ghana. Okay, so that leaves Niger just north of me to go for first. That's so okay. Oh well, that's fantastic that I've got my 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 south and my west covered. Talk us through. Your your plan your thoughts on on going with this starting strategy then Jonathan. Right. Okay. So I quite like the layout of um, how Africa is divided up in this Rising Tides game mode. In normally you'd be able to cross freely everywhere, but yeah, as you've just mentioned, there's some extra rivers, some extra dead zones, and it creates some interesting corridors for fighting. Um, so. By going in this kind of crook of West Africa, we've got a shared um, naval space, which we can defend. There's some extra rivers to defend, um, but this kind of gives us some clear routes of expansion, which we'll have to discuss the directions which we want to go. Cool. Um, across the river, you've got a bunch of countries which will be fighting amongst themselves for the south of Africa. To the west, there's a few as well, and that's a common target for the Americas and then going through to the northeast um you'll have the the Middle Eastern and the European theater um so I, I feel like in the position I'm in I want to expand south and possibly east so my first target would be the Republic of Congo uh, Tim where do you think you would start off attacking I think my first direction will be, I suppose, just west, to be honest. Um, maybe this Kaya complex in Mali um, would be a good target. Um, probably just sort of take take Mali and uh, Guinea sort of at the right. same time. Um, yeah. So this, this dome here, this complex, um, it looks different to all the other cities. Like, what's going on with that? So it's basically like one of the objectives in this in this uh, mode. So you've got the 
got the victory sites, which give you, I think, 500 points. Right. Um, and then you got these domed cities, which give you 50 points. Yeah. Um, whereas a normal city is a five six to begin with, moving up to a maximum of like 10 or 11. You just glitched okay, so out then. I really think. want to go to those um, victory sites, especially. Yeah. So, have we got any in Africa? Yeah, yeah we've got one in north, northeast, one in the central south. Yeah. What's that for? Petrol. Um, okay. So, yeah, petrol and petrol. Mm. Are they all petrol or is one of them for. Uh, Some of them are rares on this. Yeah, there's one in Europe for rares. Okay. Mm. That's like the best one to get, isn't it? North of Italy. Yeah. Right I mean, if you've got one of those on your doorstep. In the early game, that's a massive advantage. It's like a whole, like it's way more than a captured city would give you. Yeah, hundred percent. Just having a look at research. Yeah, I, um, the domes are nice to get, aren't they? They give you more. Um, say, say it's on a supply city, it gives you more supplies, so it gives you more of that that base resource. So, you, Tim, are you getting that rare? rares complex early on will be really nice for your research yeah i think that's probably just the first yeah probably just waypoint everything to that now um to start with and then order with with guinea as well right to my west um yeah right so that's yeah 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 so we've, we've we've only got five cities each, so we've started with one of each resource. Quite often um, you can get like six, seven cities, and then you get um, a duplicate of um, supplies and, um, and components. So we'll, we'll be stretched with resources in this game. Um, I'm trying to think yeah. of some of my first moves. So, I, Tim, I, I can't research Strike Fighters because I'm not in the right doctrine. I've got to wait until day, yeah. day three, so I'm going to have to go Armour. And I'm, oh, I'm thinking about armored fighting vehicles. Uh, I know I normally I go. You'd go for that, would you? I think so. Yeah, you've got a lot of desert in Africa, so I think the armored fighting vehicle. Uh, there's a bit of mountains as well, but um, actually, let's have a look at the. Um, I need army base well, level two, arms industry level one. So it might take a little while to start building this. Um, my cog city in the north would be a, a good starter. What? What? Um, while I'm having a look, what? What sort of? Um, yeah, build an army base to start with. What sort of uh, start are you go guys going for? So I've gone. So I've gone for the infantry start, and I've got the infantry officer researching, and um, then just just started researching strike fighters as well. So it's probably just going to stick with those three for the first few days. Um, yeah. Probably look at destroyers once resources are built back up a bit. So, uh, uh, just because I've got it on the screen, Tim, is, is is basically your classic start and Jonathan's classic start, and I've never gone for it, and I don't know why. Um, but I'm really tempted to... And I, th I think I will. I think I will. So you can build basic infantry in 1 minute 30 seconds. You can research it, right? And then, once you've researched it, it unlocks the infantry officer, which you can research um, within 12 hours... And then once you've got the the infantry officer, the the stats are pretty high. Um, it's the equivalent of getting a decent armoured fighting vehicle, really. Yeah, yeah. And um, also, it, uh, what's the other advantage you you see see from the officer? Um, defence and attack boost to the to the stack that it's in. He's got a lot of terrain bonuses as well, so you've got a plus twenty five percent in pretty much every terrain. Oh, nice. Um, so, and that's also what armored fighting vehicles, they've, they've, they've got really good boosts in the desert, um, which might be beneficial for you. Um, if, yeah. Can you get those on day one? Um, you, yeah, but, yeah, but I need to have army base level two, which is going to take... Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, um, according to my current morale... It's going to take one day, six hours to build army base level two, but also I need um, arms industry level one. 
which is nine hours forty five. So it's going to take a little while to get to get that. So I'm going to start building army base level two anyway. Uh, that's starting like Tuesday morning, isn't it? Yeah, and then I'll queue up arms industry level level one, and then I can start building armored fighting vehicles. And um, I'd, I'm just showing my my screen as it as it happens. I've I've just built the basic infantry. I've researched the basic um, infantry. Just just literally did it then. And then I'm going to start researching the infantry officer. Okay, so that started, and then in. Yeah, okay, and the armoured fighting vehicle will take one day, four hours to research anyway, so I'll start researching that. Mm, possible mistakes, I could have been building some combat recons. Mm. Should I be building combat recons now, and then go for armoured fighting vehicles, or just save it up all for the armoured fighting? What do you think, guys? I think probably save it for the armored fighting vehicles. I think it's waiting that extra day, um, saving the resources. I think they'll have a bigger impact. Um, okay, well, we'll give that a go. Oh god, I've just got to explain something. I don't know if any sharp eyes have seen, and I don't even know if you're aware of this, um, Tim. But I w the developers, do you remember the um, influ influencer battle we did? Um, the the developers um, they were quite happy with that sort of idea that format. And it's given them some some ideas for other stuff actually that we that can't talk about um, on air. But they gave me fifty thousand gold. Um, so along with the there's <laughs> a timely <laughs> gold offer popped up. Um, so I've got fifty three thousand gold, and I've got no idea what to do with it. So if anyone can tell, <laughs> let me know what you think. Um, be great if i could like give it away or something but um i mean like it would be great for an early game advantage um you could boost your production early on um and that's just going to multiply the bonus it gives you throughout the game uh, the other way you'd use it is just in a pinch if you wanted to make something out of nothing um yeah. but you should definitely plan out where you want to use it and so you can use it to maximum effect like if you were to speed through strike fighters now and immediately start attacking your opponent's troops, then they'd be defenseless, for example. I know, but the the question is, should I use the gold or not? Because we've often preached about not using it, haven't we? Yeah, I know what you mean. Well, it's I a think, new I game. Think, um, <laughs> stuff like um, mm -hmm. building combat outposts, stuff like that, bunkers is always is always like a a good a good defensive use for gold. I mean, I've I've currently got four thousand from the games we we had back in spring and winter. Oh, okay. Um. So I'll probably really look to use that somehow. Maybe just rush out the infantry officer when I start building it. Something like that. Get a little yeah. bit of an advantage. I think I'm gonna save it. Maybe for one of these future things these devs have in mind. Who knows? Um, okay. Yeah, but anyway, it's nice to have a little amount. Like the three thousand I've been saving up, that could give me a little boost. Like I could, I could be maybe research, finish the research on the um, armored fighting vehicle. It's nineteen fifty, um, and then you know, speed um, the army base level to nine fifty. That would be that would take up my, my three thousand that I've that I've earned from um, winning. You know, winning games. When you win a game, you you get gold, don't you? So um, I've sent out my air superiority fighter to scout um, this territory north of me, and it's a great way of just you know having having a little early peek at people. And they've got um, looks like they've got a couple of troops, no armored fighting vehicles on um, uh, Maradi. So I could actually I could actually start attacking that with my um, air superiority fighter. Because uh, if we look at the troop, we can see what sort of defense it has against the air. So it's probably got two troops, and and the troops have absolutely nothing against air. They've got 0.3 attack, um, 0 0.3 defense against the air air vehicles. So I, I could have a little pap away at that to get some instant action, and just see if it if it does anything really. And yeah, we're declaring war. So I'm doing that. I don't know if they're a oh, they're still a computer player because we're, we're still filling up in the game, aren't we? 
So um, a player might join to find that they've been attacked. Oh, I see. Okay, so wh where are you going for then, Jonathan, with your your infantry? Um, I'm not quite sure yet. So right, I'm I'm going to attack the Republic of Congo. I'm kind of stuck between going to Batu or Jambala first. Um, there's currently a player on DR Congo, and if he decides to push north and northwest, he'll likely go for um, the Central African Republic, which is a neutral nation. And then he would move on to Batu. So in that case, I, I'd want to beat him to it. Um, I've also got to consider defending my western port, Douala, which would be the first port of attack if Republic of Congo was to um, invade me. But they're currently a computer, so that that isn't too much of a worry yet. Um, but also thinking about that, DR Congo does have a naval base within reach of that on the western side um i think i think i'm going to go for jambala just because it's the closest and then move up to batu so... what there's something else we have to consider though so we've picked out our targets for adjacent countries but there's this corridor to the northeast which i like to call death valley um and i think what we'll find is countries such as libya sudan and Egypt will want to get control of that because it's just such an important and quick route from getting from Europe and Northeast Africa to um, South and West Africa and the Americas. Um, so having control of this is really important, just as having control of the um, other valley to the West will be for yourself and Tim. Um, yeah. Uh, Lib yeah, absolutely. And Libya and Egypt have human players already. Libya has its own dome on um, a supply city already as well, so that's a lucky start. Oh, and there's one in um, Ethiopia. Okay. Ooh. So which which of these valleys should we kind of control? I mean, if 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 you're taking over Niger, then that naturally leads you up to the mouth of the the Western Death Valley. Yeah, and you'll be sitting up there with Mali. Um, it's Algeria's the strategic tile, isn't it? Because you've got quite a long time to see people coming. You can set an outpost on there and a couple of couple of troops or whatever. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So Tim, you, you'll you'll be defending the west. And yeah. Once you take Mali, you'll also be up against that same valley. Um, so I'm I'm happy to take the eastern valley by myself for now because it won't take me long if i just rush down there but it's definitely a spot where i may need support later on in the game yeah maybe we could have like an airport um sort of in the middle so we can fly troops in if needed 100 percent. Um... so we've obviously got airports on our capital cities which you can see with the little uh there's the little statue on them so yours is a bougie Mine is Yunud and Tim's is Kamasi. But if we were to gain control of these valleys, then we could build one as far back as Agadez, or I could stick one on Morui. However, you pronounce that Mar Marua, I think. My my northeastern city, and it would be quite easy to reinforce Marua. Yeah, yeah, the valleys from. A couple of those points, wouldn't it? Um, yeah, the, the, pretty difficult to say. Yeah, um, I, I just did, just um, completed an, an attack. Um, my air superiority fighter has taken 0 0.4 damage um, against these troops, so I'm just going to keep papping away with that. It's probably worthwhile. We know everyone's going to start with a combat recon because they'll just mirror what we've started with. Have you? You've just got a combat recon, haven't you? One. Um, yeah. And it's probably going to be on the capital city. Combat Recon has one defense against air. Uh, so that's over there. So yeah, the, there's three cities right in my reach that I can just keep hitting with my plane. And once I've stacked up a few troops, can just drive through these weakened, um, yeah, these weakened people. Okay, that's fine. So we're talking about infrastructure and air bases. Um, but 
what sort of stuff are you guys building early on? I've, I've tentatively started army base level two and so on. I've talked about what are you guys on. Um, um, building a recruiting uh, office because you don't want to get low on manpower. Okay. Uh, using build queues from our uh, what's it called Security Council subscription. I've I've lined up some arms industries and uh, level two air base to get those strikes out as soon as possible. Oh, yeah. And may need to start thinking about a naval base as well. Yes, indeed. Um, so if I built an, a naval base early doors, because I can't really focus on strikes yet, um, because it's the doctrine I'm in, it only makes it available after three days. Yeah. I could go early doors on... Well, I could build a corvette and start papping away at um, Simiri and and um, you know the two coastal cities that I can attack yeah. through. Yeah. So I I can see from your city, Dakina, that's clearly going to be the most important naval base um, for us to defend West Africa. Yeah. Yeah. It's in a, a strategic position. Mm. Um. Yeah, so I'll start building naval base there. Oh, naval base level two. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you start off with a naval base anyway, of course. Uh, naval base level two. Yeah, it's what you need for the Corvette. And an arms industry level one. Okay, so I'll build an arms industry. So what, I'll put that on the queue. Always, always have a look at what you need uh, running out of resources already it's the rare materials um so um okay i'm gonna go on the marketplace and buy some rare materials already everyone's got their own marketplace uh we discovered this well you discovered this really jonathan and told me about it and it took a while to sink in um, mm -hmm. This marketplace is is mine. It's what I can see. It's not a shared universal worldwide marketplace in the game. So I've got rares that I can just chip through and buy. I'm um, just going to go straight and buy 602. And then I'm going to build an um, arms industry on my rare material city. Um, there we go. And actually um, queue up another one. So we've got two. Yeah, level two naval base there, so I can, okay, so we can, and then when I get research available in 11 hours, I can then start uh, researching Corvette, which will enable me to then do a frigate. Um, quite often I'll start with a, a destroyer, but that's not available till day two, so may as well go for the Corvette, because they can just start papping away at the... Um, those guys what sort of ship defense have they got <laughs> okay so so if i get a corvette papping away at say for example their combat recon because my plane can't then the the combat recon has no attack or defense against the boat and then um the people yeah they don't oh, okay they don't have attack or defense against um boats either anyone who's daring enough to move their troops over via the water without the defense of a boat then they've got no defense against them either and they'll instantly die if they come into contact with a single corvette um, and we have seen that a lot before uh, people have just been brazen to move armies via the water but it's always a massive risk and you've got to be really careful cool but um in the grand scheme of things corvettes are pretty useless and um, if they go up against like a frigate or a destroyer, they're, they're just they're just gone. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So maybe very early game, they're worth it. I'm seeing up at the top. There's a there's a new resource we haven't come across before, which is deployable gear. Gear used to deploy armaments to the battlefield must be produced in cities. Oh, what do you think this is about. Um, I don't know, but I I I think I saw something a while ago. I haven't played this this game in a while. It's the the games I play are, are recorded, so you can see when I last played. Um, hmm. Let's look, look on the research tab. See if there's any new units. Then uh, leap bomber. Right, so it's, I it's think it's under it, seasons. It's under seasons. Um, yeah. Oh, elite UGV. Okay. Ah, uh, so. Mm. I, 
Um, I haven't unlocked that. Have you? No. So the requirements are it needs day, to be day two. two. And you need to have a minimum of basic mech, basic marines, or basic SAS. Basic mech, basic marines, basic rangers. Mech, marines, rangers. One of those, I think. Mechanised no. infantry. Basic mechanised, yeah, okay. Uh, marines. So, it's a deployed armament. It's deployed in the battlefield by another unit. It costs 30 deployable gear and, oh, it has to be deployed by either the naval, the special forces or the mechanised infantry. Okay. Um, and it scouts the composition of an army in sight range. Doesn't look like it provides any buffs. Oh, but you go to level two and it adds some extra kind of perks to it. So on level two, it can reveal stealth. It can storm a position. Um, which means it ignores defensive bonuses of a city. It gives MBC protection, and it also gives a plus three percent attack to a stack. Wow! So that's really impressive at level two. And I'm not sure if it gives like things like MBC protection to others in the stack. MBC protection is is against chemical warfare okay. and nuclear warfare. Um, level three. I'm excited to see what this is. So it gives an overall buff to the to the stack, doesn't it? Um... Level three is the max level. It adds radar detection. Hmm. Wow. So it it just combines the strengths of the lots of different other units we will cover. As it's like a real buff to a stack of troops. Pretty big attack. Um, a troop attack. Twelve. Twelve attack. Um, against troops. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's pretty good. Okay, well, um, it's a new elite unit. I'll I'll have to see if it becomes available to me um, because they often aren't because I haven't reached the certain, I haven't been in the season and done enough games, or whatever. But yeah, hopefully so. Okay, great. Oh, that could be exciting news in that. I'm just looking to my south, and um, whilst there's lots of desert in northern Africa, there, there's lots of jungle to the south of me. And to get around effectively, I, I could benefit from taking on some sort of airborne troop or uh, a tank which can effectively get through the jungle or special forces. Yeah. If I go for special forces, that would be a really good bonus as, as, as part of that to have some of these unmanned units. The jungle's pretty tough. And, and what? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's Republic slow. Of Congo very slow to get through there oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna really struggle you two will be making quicker progress than me yeah tim's in a little bit of desert to your west northwest yeah. and then i've just got you've got a real mix desert you've got some mountains and some jungle and some open land too so you're actually very well defended considering the jungles on your borders and the mountains is, is what's between us as well. Yeah, and then just there's a pretty much desert in between us and the uh, the middle corridor going up to Algeria. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be important strategically, locking that off. Okay, so I've got a few resources left. I'm going slow and tentative. You say you're worried about sometimes um, running out of manpower and building a recruiting office can be quite a good idea um, but also the other benefit of a recruiting office is that it increases the um, the speed in which you you build stuff so 10 percent for the, for level one 25 percent quicker for, for level two for building stuff so that's useful um, anywhere i'm building something already i'm not going to build a recruiting office i could build a recruiting office on my petrol city i guess um, just to boost that manpower production and then Lagos what am I going to do in Lagos it's out on a limb out on its own I'll go yeah I'll just just build an arms industry that'll be fine tough for now. one really like you could turn that into another air base to help you quickly get across the river or it could be a secondary naval base if you're geared a bit more towards that yeah, and the other thing, so 
if if I built an airbase just on a random tile that I own, like um, but still across the water, it's a lot cheaper. So um, airfield seven hundred resource um, supplies, nine hundred components, eight hundred petrol, two thousand five hundred cash money. But if I built it in the city, um, it's a lot more. It and it takes electronics as well. So it can it can be a cheap way just to, if you just want quick movement. So I don't know if I'll build an airbase there. Tim scouting with his plane. Oh, you've right, got a right. bogey. Can you see what oh, it is? And also, I'll take this chance to remind you that um, if you fly your planes over a river, over a river, it's neutral airspace. Uh, so you don't need yeah. to go to war with the country. And this is what I'm currently doing with the R Congo. So I'm moving my plane just next to Bumba. Um, so I'll be able to see whether he's moving his troops west or east or not moving them at all great idea and and what you can do is go to one point in the river and then to another point in the river so you could um, have a look at Kisanjani uh, by doing a flyover essentially Ooh. and yeah, uh, so you, you know you could go to a, a point in the ro river that's like south of Betu and then just yep. another you know point in the river that's east of Kisanji and 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 you can do some really clever scouting missions. You can you can pretty much reach anywhere on the map with the the amount of rivers here. Yeah, but, you know you could, you could go in all yeah, sorts of directions. Yeah, superiority is is the most valuable troop early game. Yeah, early scout. See yeah. what people are doing, especially where you've got an active player. Yeah. Uh, Tim, what are oh, so. Looks like you've discovered where the, co the 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 combat recon is. A little bit unlucky that it's ended up being on that one, but um, yeah, because that's not their capital. Mm, so I am, um, yeah. It it's just always quite a bit harder to to take a city because of the defensive bonus and the how weak troops are against the armored fighting ver um the recons. Um, yeah. So yeah, I'm just gonna stack everything up and. Try and be a bit careful with with the resources because I'm starting with five cities. I haven't really got an abundance of troops, so um, yeah, yeah, I'm just gonna take that one slowly. But if we take this apart, Tim, combat recons by looking at yours and looking at the stats, combat recons have four point five attack against troops, um, and defense. And when you add on their bonus of being in a city, they get an entrenchment bonus, don't they? So that what's that twenty five percent? Um. It's, it, it's like 30 something like it reduces uh, yeah the 25 yeah yeah it reduces the damage of an incoming attack by 25 percent. so you imagine you send two troops um against the combat recon they'll have an attack of four well that that gets reduced by 25 percent. so that that goes down to three um and and already the uh the combat recon is attacking you with four and a half and you're attacking them with three so yeah you've got to stack up your troops high preferably get another combat recon in there as well and um i don't know maybe you could yeah. chip away at them with the plane or not yeah um, probably will um once i get close get get some vision on it with the recon so i can see what health they've got left um yeah chip away with the plane and go in with the troops when they're a bit low let's go through um, what you're building tim yeah so done the five five army bases um got the five arms industries going and then i've got a recon uh, uh, a recruiting office rather ready to build a uh infantry officer with um, oh yes uh, and okay Got the army ba uh, air base level two queued for tomorrow. Capital so, city. yeah. So let's look at the requirement for this officer because I didn't spot that. So we're going to need, yeah, recruiting office level one, army base level level one. Um, okay, so I need to incorporate that. I'm glad you mentioned it. So, recruiting office, I am building over here. So if I just stack up an army base, yeah, that, that that's going to be in the right zone for. For sending him north. Okay, good. And um, uh, 
Yeah, I, I mean, I've got plenty of resources now to start building a few more buildings and, and queuing them up, but I'm just going to have a look at the state of the world. So, Rising Tides is in, what's the basis of this game? It's in the future. Yeah, yeah, global warming has taken over. So not so far in the future then. Okay, just having a look through the whole map. Yeah, and there's just a lot more rivers, aren't there? It's all flooded, and there's some places that are a bit made up, like Amazonia, and it's a little bit of a, a dystopian future. And we've got a little light lit up corner of the world where we're going to try and take it take it all over, and um, generally put out an update every day where we can. So join us in this series and um, see how far we go it's just the beginning and this is how you get a really good start with you know look at each of well, i mean jonathan and tim are a bit more veteran than me but i can make some good starts as well let me know what you think about the gold any other thoughts from from you guys i think it's going to be an exciting game yeah we've, yeah. Not, we've not done this sort of setup before have we have we no last no. time we were here we were in the middle east uh, it's going to be a very different theatre of war with its own challenges and hurdles to overcome and hopefully a few epic battles. Yeah. Tim? Yeah, um, yeah, it's going to be different. We don't start in Africa um, very often. We've done a couple of games here, but it is much different on this uh, on this map with the different rivers and things breaking up the land. So it's yeah, it's a much more different landscape. Um, yeah, that'll add a bit of interest for us. Always try and do something a bit new, a bit different. Um, and as usual, I'm, I'm definitely going for a very different setup once again in this series. Uh, different every time. So um, okay, well, um, thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you in the next episode. Uh, to see how we got on on our first day. So it's a uh, goodbye from me. Goodbye from me. Yeah, goodbye from me. Over and out.